Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Sterrett small hole gauges, the telescoping gauges, and the radius gauges. Since these are my three star gauge sets, uh, I just decided to include them all in uh, the same review for the sake of having uh, a little bit less redundancy. Now, these are going to be the most common type of gauges I would recommend somebody have if they're going to get in any, not just machining, but if you're going to get more into automotive work, then you're going to want these types of gauges so you can measure all sorts of things from guide pin and alignment pin, uh, alignment pins to brake calipers. This, anytime you really need to me get an accurate measure inside a hull and you can't really rely on dial calipers to do that, especially if you need to go deeper or if you need to get multiple measurements. And especially because the tops of any kind of bores or cylinders or holes oftentimes will have some kind of lip, so you also need to get past that. These three gauge sets all together can be had for right around $100 or so. They're really not that expensive. Uh, I mean, full MSRP might be $150 range, but if you hunt around online, um, wait for some sales to happen, you can get them for a pretty reasonable price. And you can always trust a stare at name. It's kind of one of the things about them is they are like a, you could say they're kind of like the snap on and measuring tools. Uh, some of their tools really aren't the very best, just like snap on tools. And there's lots of other brands, Brown and Sharp and Mitotoyo, et cetera, which are also make very good tools. Um, but oftentimes, Sterrett really is some of the best, and they really do pay uh, good attention to fit and finish in quality control. And to speak of that, let's go ahead and start off with the whole gauges, the S829Es here. They come in these little vinyl pouches, and they actually hold up for a while. I'm not exactly sure what kind of chemical got sprayed on this vinyl pouch, but it did cause some coloring issues. And so the, these gauges would come as a four-piece set. They do make larger ones, but... As far as measuring most holes you would run into, you would get this small hole gauge set, telescoping gauges, and then maybe a more expensive large telescoping gauge set. And so that's all these are, is this four gauges. They tell you the range. They'll go from an eighth of an inch up to half an inch through these four gauges. So you can tell each one of these does not have a ton of range. How these gauges work is they're just a split ball. It has a little cone. Come on, camera. There you go. Now you can see the cone. There's a little nub in there to prevent the cone from rotating when you twist the little screw handle. And as you screw the screw handle in, here we go, that cone starts forcing these out. And how you measure a bore is you put this down into the bore and you get it to where there's, come on camera, a bit of friction. And when you need a bit of friction, it needs to feel like you wouldn't be able to pull it all the way out unless without actually scratching it because then you know you've gotten a, a good solid contact. Not too much pressure to dent it, but you want to make sure that uh, it feels like it's getting stuck because uh, you know you're getting good contact. Then you would actually rotate it to the side because this is actually a little bit wider right in the center than it is off to the either the sides here, or the lower portions of the sphere. So you would tilt it a little bit and then that would allow you to remove it and then you just run a micrometer over the outside of that. And that's always a technique is holding these and miking them. Let's go and look at the quality. That's one of the things I wanted to show is just the deburring, uh, the machine work on the the head right there. You can see it's actually a little lathe bit or a piece for the, the cone. The knurling on these, as you can see, is this is a perfect example of knurling. It's perfect little pyramids. Um, pretty unbelievable. The stamping on sterrets is always, it's a, sometimes a little inconsistent, light or heavy, but that's inevitable. It's always readable, and of course the little handle. And that's one thing you can uh, kind of count on with Sterrett is even the small one, which may not be quite as heavily knurled, is still really consistent. You can see the knurling was just a bit soft, so it didn't rise into full pyramids. And you can also see the stamping is actually particularly light. And so that would be basically the inconsistencies that you might run into. Um, although they're very minimal and like on a small tool like this you can see where they were trying to make sure they didn't deform the tool through heavy machine work and sometimes that works out and sometimes it doesn't but it's something I've always appreciated about Sterrett in that they use pretty high quality packaging because it actually hasn't fallen apart on me 
The next thing we're going to look at is the telescoping gauges here. These also are on the four-piece set, but basically these start covering the ranges that the small hole gauges max out at. So we have the smallest one, which goes from 5 sixteenths to half inch, or and that's the smallest is, um, oh, excuse me, that one also goes a half inch. Okay, so this one will kind of cover the transition area, and then that goes all the way up to two and an eighth inch, and this would be a small set. They also make a large six piece set uh, that would go all the way up to six inches, and then this would be the next uh, stage of measuring. How these work is they're telescoping. They just have two anvils, one, they're little pipes basically, or little tubes, and then they slide inside each other like this. And then this is just a little pin that will actually lock them down once you get it in the position you want it in. And that will provide you a measurement. And so these also have a trick just like any other measuring tool. The trick with these is, is that you actually have to have just a little bit of friction on them. And that's the hardest part is because these are designed where you're actually offset, not too much. You get a little bit of friction and then when you do your measurement, you tilt them up. And that's the hardest part about these, is to get just the right amount of tension so that it will push it in with friction and then stay at the measurement. And so that's the idea, is you get a, just a bit of friction there, you tilt it over, and so that gives you the amount of pressure that you need. Sorry about that. And that would give you the uh, appropriate amount of pressure so it pushes in on the anvils and you know you got a solid measurement. And then once again you would just run a micrometer over the heads and they're both hemispherical specifically for that purpose and sometimes you have to do it a couple times uh, sometimes the friction isn't you know these aren't always the most sensitive they either seem to jam up or just be spring loose and that's just kind of part of dealing with them is just doing multiple measurements just to make sure you got the right uh, uh, right number these are also made really well they're really nicely polished heads nice tubes the little head that holds them together is pretty well assembled or I believe it's cast it may be machined but it's just beautifully accurate this has a real deep stamping as you can see sometimes start gets heavy on them and then the knurling is also just about perfect and that's one real nice thing about these sterets is on these little gauges you really have to grip them and that aggressive knurling is very handy and once you hold tools like this, it always seems frustrating how many manufacturers put knurling on tools, but it's like pretend. It's just so soft. Uh, it's more like a visual texture than anything that actually would be to assist in your gripping ability, which is the point of the whole point of knurling. It's not there to look at. It's not there to be pretty. It's there to be sharp little edges so that you can get grip on something. Now here we are to the radius gauge set, which would probably be the, you know, it wouldn't be the most used type of tool. Um, although it is quite handy whenever, if you're ever in a situation where you're trying to file some piece of metal and get it to match a curve, uh, you really need these because they make an amazing difference. And there's been a surprising number of situations where uh, these also help you tell the diameter of something without having to totally disassemble, especially when you can't get a measurement across two points say like this brush we didn't have any idea what size that was and you if you had to drill it out you'd be kind of doing some guesswork to really know what is the right size drill but if there's just a little portion of it exposed maybe 25 percent of it a radius gauge would allow you to see that oh wow it's a one inch diameter and so i choose a one inch or slightly smaller than one inch drill if i needed to drill out something that was that size as far as the quality of these radius gauges, they're all really nice. They're stainless steel, they have great stamping, and these have a variety. Of, these are radius gauges, not diameter gauges. So the actual distance across these two points is one inch, because it's measuring a half inch radius. And that always confuses people. They say, well, it's half inch, but that's way bigger than a half inch drill bit. No, this is radius so the half the radius would be a half inch but the diameter is one full inch and so all the curves on these this outside curve is the radius we have this inside curve here the this outside quarter curve here this inside quarter curve and then this edge curve are all the same radius and then they have a special holder here and i had a different one in it 
oftentimes it can be difficult. How you would use these is you just match them up to see if you can see light through or if it doesn't want to sit nicely. If you're filing something and you get it close, it's really nice just to put this next to it and say, oh, I'm getting really close to that quarter inch radius. You can do things where if you're doing the outside edge of something, you can put Sharpie on it and then use the radius gauge to scrape and then it will scrape the Sharpie off where the high points are and you file it and then you just paint it again and scrape it and you can get very, very accurate radiuses. It's surprising. But since they don't always fit in all situations, you have this little holder, which is just a little split and it just sits in there. You can put it in either direction and then you just use it as a clamp. And then this would allow you to get the radius gauge in situations where you can't hold it properly with your fingers. And I always thought that was kind of innovative. Uh, I will make a note that you don't want to clamp too hard on this because it can ding up these gauges. Now, these, since these are odd, you'd say, well, how, you know, really are they that useful? Once you kind of know you have radius gauges, then every time you run into a situation where you're trying to measure an arc or get something to be accurately matched to an arc, you say, oh, I have some radius gauges and I can make that work out much better for me. And the thing also, when you use a radius gauge, even if you're not perfect, you're far more perfect than using your eye. It's surprising because even if you get it, you know, good enough, pretty close to the radius gauge, and then you take away the gauge and just look at it in your hand, it looks nearly perfect. And it could all be done with just a file and some of these gauges. So anyway, that was just a quick overview of these three gauge sets. I just wanted to discuss them and, and give a nice close look at Sterrett's overall build quality of some of the more common tools you might see. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.